3k subs. You guys are insane. Thank you so, so much from the bottom of my... Do you mind? Really? Yeah, my buddy. How'd you go? Right, thank you for 3k subs, is what I was trying to say, before I was rudely interrupted. In celebration of 3,000 subscribers, I've decided to redo the first video that I put on this channel. The video was about lenses. Don't go and look for it because you're not gonna find it. Instead of the convoluted mess that was that video, I've decided to restructure it a little bit and just talk about the numbers that are on a lens. So this sort of video is focused at beginners, bare bones beginners who just need to know their basics around a lens and what those things mean. If you're that type of person, keep watching. If you're not, don't switch off yet. Take this video, share it with a friend who maybe doesn't know about this stuff. Let's start off with the parts of a lens because, well, they're important terms to know. So the piece of glass at the very front of the lens is called the front element. You then have the lens barrel, which is pretty much the whole body of the lens. On that barrel, you will have a focus ring. That's where all your focus marks are, and it usually has a gear involved as well. It depends what sort of lens you're using, but cinema ones will have a gear. If you've got a zoom lens, there'll also be a zoom ring, but this is just a prime that I've got in this example here. So it has an aperture ring instead, which the zoom will also have, but you get the point. The aperture ring displays the f-stops and the t-stops, which I'll explain in a moment. And that basically opens and closes an iris that is on the inside of the lens. You then have the lens mount. Lens mounts can come in a variety of different flavors. Usually the industry standard is PL. You can also get EF, you can get E mount, you can get X mount like the Fuji. There are lots and lots of different types of lens mounts you can get. And then taking up the rear is the rear element, and that is the rear piece of glass. Inside the lens are groups of glass that kind of work together to focus and magnify to get your focal length, or this number here. But that millimeter number is actually determined by the distance from the sensor to the optical center of a lens. So for instance, if you have a 50 or 100 or something along the lines of that, you'll have a more compressed field of view. You'll have less of a degree in your field of view. More zoomed in, if you will. And the smaller the number, so when you're edging on the 16, the 24, that sort of range, you're looking at a wider field of view. So you're looking at more in shot. So let's take a look at another set of numbers on the lens and that is the aperture. Aperture is measured in stops really. So you've got t-stops and f-stops and t-stops and f-stops are different. They are very close and they kind of use the same scale-ish but they are different. They're measuring two completely different things. You see f-stop is the ratio between the focal length and the opening of the iris in millimeters. So a 50 millimeter lens at f2.8 will mean that the diameter of the opening of the iris is about 18 millimeters. That's rounded up. T-stop is a measure of the transmission of light through a lens, or in other words, how much light gets through all of those bits of glass and hits the sensor. T-stops are numbers like F-stops or F numbers, but the transmission is measured in percentages and you use that in the equation to work out what your t-stop will be. You don't really need to know this equation off by heart, it's not something you'll need every single day, but you might need it if you're using multiple types of lenses, some with f-stops and some with t-stops. If you want to try and match them and you're being very critical about exposure, you might need to know this to work out what the appropriate f-stop would be or the appropriate t-stop would be. Now because t-stop is a measure of light transmission, it means it's more consistent and that makes it perfect for film. Because if you think about it, if you're measuring something with f-stops, it's reliant on the focal length. So if you've got two different cameras for two different angles, one camera has a 50, one has an 85 or whatever it might be, those cameras might yield different results in exposure and that could be jarring if you're putting them side by side. It may not be much and you probably won't really notice anything but it can be significant especially if you're using different lens types, different brands. The light transmission on lenses can be very different and varied between lenses because of glass quality, because of coatings, because of the interiors of a lens. There's lots of different factors involved so measuring the light transmission quality is a more accurate way to get correct exposure. In saying that both f-stops or f-numbers and t-stops are related to each other because you still need to have the f-number to put into the calculation for the t-stop. So they kind of work hand in hand, but t-stop is 
definitely more accurate. Regardless of using f-stop or t-stop, you're still gonna see a difference in exposure, obviously, when you open or close the iris. And that change is also gonna have a hand in your depth of field or the amount of stuff that is within your focus plane. So the higher the number in f-stop or t-stop, the less light is coming through the lens, obviously, because it's closed down, and then the more is in focus. And then the smaller the number, the more light is coming through the lens and the less is in focus. So you can use that to your own creative advantage. So thank you very much for watching this pretty short video today. I really, really appreciate it. And I can't believe that my channel's growing this quick. I never expected it to grow this quick and I can't believe how many of you actually want to watch my content. It's completely mind boggling. So thanks for your comments. Thanks for your likes. Thanks for following me on all of my different social media accounts, my Instagram, my Twitter, all of that stuff. And thank you for watching the ads. I know they're really annoying and you're probably never gonna see a mid-roll ad from me because I hate them a lot. But I really do appreciate you taking that time because in turn, it really, really does help the channel. It takes a long time to put these videos together, to write them, to produce them, to cut them together. All of that stuff takes a lot of time and it's nice to be able to have some sort of payoff at the end of it. So thank you very much again and I hope to see you next time.